Good afternoon. This is Richard Brooks. I'm the pastor at First Presbyterian Church of Decatur, Alabama. The Decatur Church, First Presbyterian, is almost 170 years old, and we're experiencing new things, especially with this virus going around and trying new outreach programs. This morning at nine o'clock on Wednesday, we had our very first interactive Bible study. We hope you'll join us next Wednesday at nine o'clock. The Bible study lasts for about 30 minutes with discussion. But this is a summary of that Bible study, and I hope you'll go through it and uh, see what we have to offer. I'll be giving some slight dialogue, uh, reading the scripture, and we'll see actually the scripture acted out in the Holy Land as it probably originally occurred. We are looking at chapter, at chapter 10, of um, the Gospel of John, and I would share with you this story. Chapter 10 of the Gospel of Luke. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. So he was sending them out ahead of him. Jesus told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I am sending you, but I'm sending you as lambs among wolves. We talked this morning about the difference between a lamb and a wolf. A wolf is a predator. Uh, a lamb is uh, the, the victim. And lambs usually need protection from their shepherd. Wolves roam the countryside all along all along looking for, for fresh meat. So we're asked to be gentle, needing God's guidance as lambs, but we should be going out into the world, even when it takes courage to live among wolves. Further, Jesus said, do not take a purse or a bag or a sandal. Do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace is there, your peace will rest upon them. If not, it will return to you. Say, stay there eating and drinking whatever they give you for the worker deserves his wages. And do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered you. Heal the sick who are there and to proclaim to them the kingdom of God has come near to you. I often remind you that the primary message of Jesus is the kingdom of God is not only in the future, but is here among us. So be rescued, be saved, be a part of God's kingdom. In verse 10, but if you enter a town or, and are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near to you. I tell you, Jesus told his followers, I tell you, it would be more bearable on the day for Sodom than for these towns. It's interesting to reflect on the specific instructions that Jesus gives them, not to take too much, take just enough, but not too much, to offer peace, to proclaim the kingdom of God, but also when people reject you to say, we brought the kingdom here, you have rejected it. The next part of this passage, he, Jesus talks about the woes to the cities who have been rejecting him. And towards the end, he says, whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you, that person rejects me. But whoever rejects, whoever rejects me rejects the one who also sent me. The idea that Jesus is talking about here is that we are apostles. We are not the original apostles. We're not apostles probably in our church today, but we are apostles. The Greek word for apostle is apostolos, which literally means one who is sent off on behalf of another, a messenger, an ambassador of someone else. St. Paul said, we are now ambassadors of God's love in Christ. And Jesus is basically telling these 72, you are ambassadors, go out and do things that I've asked you to do. And Jesus also says, while 
you're doing this, the, I've seen lightning and Satan fall from the heavens in what you're doing. And Jesus says, I've given you authority over all these many things. And you must rejoice, but also rejoice that your name is in heaven. Let us now look and see this particular enacting of the scripture from the Holy Land in its most vivid and poignant presentation. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to come. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no curse, no bag, no sandals, and salute no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest upon him. But if not, it shall return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it shall be more tolerable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babes. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son and any one to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Quite an interesting presentation. These presentations were filmed in the 1970s on location using not actors, but local citizens. They're speaking Aramaic or Jewish, uh, Hebrew, whatever is needed for that time period. They are on location in the most accu accurate presentation of this gospel story ever, ever produced. I hope it was meaningful to you. And I would close with asking you about our task as apostles, being sent out into the world as lambs among wolves, but yet with God's divine guidance and protection. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all.